All right, guys, so tonight I am making cowboy steaks for dinner, and Brian said that I need to start showing you guys exactly how to do this. So what better dinner to start with than the cowboy steaks? There's nothing like it, and when I say there's nothing like it, there is not a steak on the market that you can get anywhere that is as good as these are. Even the Wagyu beef is not as good as these. These are amazing. So I'm going to show you them, and I'm going to show you what I'm making with them, and then in just a little bit where you're going to dive right in to the preparation of these amazing steaks all the way to the plate I'll get you guys there so we're going I'm going to show you guys first of all these amazing steaks I have not prepped them at all they're just on the sheet pan waiting to get their bath of all the delicious things I'm going to season them with so just give you guys an idea you really really can't tell the depth of this steak but if I was to show you it in my hand here it is that is one beefy beefy steak and Brian will be the one eating that one steak to himself so we will be doing it with some fresh asparagus I have an artichoke cart that I'm going to be um, dicing up and putting with some garlic butter we have some mushrooms that are going to be topping this bad boy. Some of the seasonings I like to use are the ground paprika, lari seasoning salt, some garlic powder, some ground pepper, some salt, and then to finish it off, once that is all done, we have this right here that I make a garlic butter with, but it's an herb de providence. It's an infused sea salt, has a variety of stuff in it. It's absolutely amazing. So we are going to start, and I'm going to come back to you guys with some preparation of this and get this going. All right, we'll be back. There's that creeper. He cannot wait for dinner. Okay, I am back, people. Hold on, hold that thought. I gotta turn my daughter's volume down. Still moving. How do people make three minute videos? Oh my gosh, I suck in the kitchen. Look at this, that is grease, people. OMG, this is the start of my home video. Right there. Do you see it dripping? That is oil all over the place. <laughs> I suck at this. Gosh, I guess at the end of the day, what matters is that it's going to taste good. So that is the objective. Clean up the mess, get back at it because people need to eat in this family. And I cannot let these little hiccups in the road get me down. I cannot do it. I just cannot do it. So I'm going to clean up my mess like a big girl. I'm going to get to the floor. That is disgusting. Oil everywhere. So I would advise people in my family not to step anywhere near the bread box or the toaster or knives or anything else for that matter because you might go sliding. But I'll be right back. We are going to get to these steaks. And it's the last thing I do. You know it's a good start when you have to do a mop in between your prep work. That's a good sign of a good chef is that it's a mess in my kitchen. So here we go. We're going back. Got to mop the floor first. All right, I am back at it. I am ready to rock and roll. I am gloved up. I am scrubbed up on the mess and I'm prepped up. So guess what time it is, people? It is time for soon jam and ass tomahawk steaks. So let's get to it right now, all right? So the one thing I do not have anymore out besides a tiny, tiny little drop is my oil because I literally dumped it all over everything. So I do have to go back after some oil. Stay with me. I do have weird lighting in my kitchen that keeps glistening my face up, but we're going to get out some oil. That's the first thing you got to do with these bad boys is give them a bath and lather them up in some love and some oil and some spice and all the other stuff in between because that's what makes them delicious. When you go to put them on the grill, which they have to be put onto a grill first, you can prep them, cook them a lot of different ways, but for me, it's all about the barbecue. You gotta start off with a little bit of the charbroiledness to them, sear them off really nice and good on both sides for about four minutes, not turning them. That's the most important thing. A lot of people like to fool with the meat, turn the meat, do all kinds of stuff with the meat. If you want those nice grill marks, and you really want it to taste good, you let it sit. And you let the flames go up the side of it, charring off those little pieces of fat around the outside of the meat. Not only will it taste amazing, 
it'll look amazing. You can actually cross, um, if you want to do the cross grill marks, you could totally do that. So at one point, keep it on there for about three minutes. Then you can actually reverse the angle of the steaks so you have those cross grill marks. So that's a tip. Then once you get done with doing that, you flip it and do the same thing on the other side. And after with the steak size this big, you're probably going to do about 10 minutes on the grill, five minutes on each side. And then after you're done getting those beautiful grill marks, searing them off on a really, really high heat. You don't want to let your barbecue get down to where it's like low. You want the flames. You want it when you first put the coals on. Normally they tell you, no, 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 don't do that. That's when you want to put it on because you're going to get that nice flame marks. You're going to get the nice searing. And then after that, you're going to bring them in and you're going to finish them off in the oven. So that is the most important thing with your tomahawk steaks. So we're going to get started with that. I'm going to set you guys down so that I can start doing what I got to do with these things. Okay, hold on. Okay, guys, so in front of me, I've got my two tomahawk steaks. I have my oil. I have all my herbs. I have my side dishes that I'm going to start with them. So what I'm going to do, you can take a, you know, a small cup, a spoon, a thimble, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to take the cap of the oil itself and I'm going to pour out a little bit of oil for each of my steaks. And I'm going to just drizzle it right across the top of it and with one cap full the size of an oil bottle you should be able to really like coat your entire steak over with not too much oil but you are going to literally play with your meat that's why i'm all gloved up here because people are going to be eating this you don't want to put your hands all over their food but at the same time you really want to take your meat and cover it and coat it really really well with the oil so that way all your herbs everything that you're putting on there will stick to it and then also on the grill it will allow this meat to really get a beautiful searing so look at how glistening that is i mean that's bigger than my chest size <laughs> this thing is huge okay so we got both sides of our meat we got the bone you got everything on this one done i'm going to repeat the same steps on the second steak and we're going to get that bad boy covered up with some nice beautiful grease as well make sure that they're both ready and prepped for the grill okay so once i get them covered in our nice little layering of oil forget what i'm doing here i'm going to put you on pause for a minute because i do have to get my seasonings together and i do not want to touch some of my oily hands so hold that thought people all right i'm back at it people so now i've got all my lids open to all my seasonings my spices we are ready to rock and roll so i got my pepper you're going to give it a good covering on the pepper and again you just want to be gracious and generous in your coating and once you do the one side you're actually going to take the seasoning you apply to the one side and you're going to basically massage it back into the meat on both sides so you don't have to do it on both sides you don't want to over season it and like I said earlier I'm going to make a really really amazing garlic butter that has a special herb in it that I use especially for these which is this right here I mean this stuff you can't really find it in too many places but it's absolutely amazing it has um, thyme in it there's basil in here you don't want to use too much of this because it can be overpowering and really this meat has enough flavor for itself it holds up alone and you really don't have to do too much of it to to make it absolutely amazing so there i added some garlic salt i've added salt i've added pepper i'm going to add in my lari seasoning salt this in our family goes on almost everything if you haven't had lari seasoning salt you are missing out on the best seasoning salt ever and if you've never been to one of the Lari's Prime Rib Steakhouses, you're missing out again on one of the most amazing experiences. So, table side service, they come cut your prime rib, do all that good stuff. So, this right here that I'm using is just a little paprika. And now paprika, for those of you who may not know it, is a actual spice. I know a lot of times people use it for color, add color to it, but the ground paprika is actually a uh, Mexican spice. It is kind of like a pepper, not quite as strong as a pepper, but it will add flavor to your food. So if you don't use paprika, you can start getting that and try and use that. But just to look at the one side of it, there it is all seasoned up. You wanna basically take that, and you wanna cover the exterior, like outer parts of it, and you want to cover both sides of the meat. But like I said, you don't want to do seasoning on both sides because that will 
create it to be a little bit too salty and we want this meat to be the star not the seasonings the seasonings should just help to intensify the amazing flavors that this meat already has in it so we are going to cover this do a little coat bring it off the side and another reason why you do this and you massage your meat is because you don't want you want that seasoning to be blended and some people will actually just pour out all the seasonings into one and do kind of like an allspice type of thing and then apply it but i actually like to just kind of layer it on there and then massage it in all over the meat and you get it on the back sides all sides but there we have two beautifully seasoned steaks ready for the grill and you know what another thing it doesn't hurt your meat to actually handle it because that actually softens the meat up and it's ready for me to you know get it out on the grill just like our muscles they kind of need a little tenderizing well playing with your meat actually just helps that to happen so that way when you get it onto the grill all of those oils and fats can just start to like render themselves and of course by not cutting the meat and allowing it to rest all that flavor goes right back inside of it so we got that started i'm getting ready to go start the grill next step we'll be putting it on the grill and showing you how we get those beautiful grill marks we're already at 11 minutes so whoever goes along the ride with me on this is going to have to be in it for a long time because i don't know how to edit all right, hold on to that dot. All right, so I got the handy dandy matches. This always reminds me of Maul because she always had matches above the stove to light it for when she would make Pap his steaks on the grill. Okay, so I'm going to take these matches and I'm going to go out and start the grill with you guys so we can get that going. And while we're doing that, we're gonna have about 20 minutes for it to heat up actually not even that long I'd say 10 minutes that's an exaggeration because remember again we want that hot hot flame very beginning and then once we get some red on the coals we are going to be slapping down these bad boys so let me turn you around and take a look and they are ready look at that oh now you can see that seasoning on there look at how they look they are ready who's coming over for dinner be ready in about 45 minutes all right all right, so pile up those coals big and high. I prefer to use charcoal. So get it nice and high, and then we're going to add some flames to this bad boy. There it is right there. The fire is going, and it is a beauty. So we are going to get this bad boy going. You guys ready for it? Oh, man. All right, guys, I've got a costume change, if that's what you want to call this. It is cold out here, so I have my robe on. And I've got my mittens because this is hot and I'm about to put these grades back down on here to get them hot and ready for the steak so here we go welcome to Cali baby okay so as you can see there is still a good flame and it is right butted up to the grade grids or whatever you want to call them right up to it so you want that fire right there and you want it coming through just like that you talk about charbroiled this is charbroiled but it is not going to burn your steaks it is going to give them that amazing searing on the outside that we're looking for so here we go now here is the true thing you must make sure that one look at you look at this right here you see how close that is right there in the center I'm gonna get weird little markings for my steaks if I leave that just like that so let's fix that and pull that over here make it a perfect spacing for the steaks oh yeah that way our steaks look good taste good and everybody can just rave about them all right here we go I'm going down with the first steak here it is, look at that. I'm gonna just grab this sucker right here by the bone. Remember what I said, do not move them once you get them on there. So you wanna make sure you've got good placement where you can fit both of these bad boys. And the most important thing is that the meat actually make it over the hottest part of the grill, not the bone. So you want to make sure you angle it, whatever you need to do, but make sure it's down in a way in which the flames can actually get that meat. On both sides you hear the sizzle listen it's immediately sizzling and I got to put one more down on there next to that so let me get this down I'm kind of going at an angle we're gonna have it like an angle here we go second one is going down oh snaps 
This one's going down like that. All right, I wanna make sure we have a beautiful, beautiful markings on these stakes. Not that it matters to anybody, but it matters to me. So here you go. Stakes are down. We're gonna give them a few minutes. You're gonna to start to see them catch fire here soon. Look at that. We are getting some flames coming up the sides of the stake there. It's exactly what you want right there. Look at that. And then you just leave it. Don't move it. Don't do nothing to it. Allow that stake to get that flame right to it. And this one back here on the back side, same thing. He's not doing quite as good as this spot over here, but he will catch. And when he does, he's going to be amazing as well. But we're not going to move him. We're gonna let the flames catch because once that grease starts to like drip into there from the fat, it will definitely spark up just like this bad boy is right here. So we're just gonna allow that to happen. Look at that. And while that's happening, we're gonna go back in the kitchen and I'm going to show you what I'm gonna be prepping for dinner to go with this. Okay guys, so I have a plate of asparagus. That's what my family loves to eat and we eat a lot of it. So this is an entire platter full of asparagus that I'm going to show you like what to do with it. So it's super fast, super easy. All we really have to do, I'm gonna take you guys around the corner so we stop getting that backlight just on me, okay? All you gotta do, cut the ends. These are already washed and cleaned. What I'm gonna do is just take those little ends off because sometimes they're a little hard here. You can also peel asparagus. Sometimes people like to do that because if you overcook it or cook it wrong, you can get stringiness to it. And a lot of times, like if you have littles and stuff that just don't like to eat them, a way you can get away from that is to peel them. But you don't have to go all out to do that. You just have to cook them right. Keep a little texture and crunch to them. Cook them less than what you actually think you should. If you do that and you learn to perfect how to cook asparagus, you won't have as much waste and you will have children that love it. My kids absolutely love asparagus. And all we're doing is taking a little bit off of them, dropping them in some water. Um, there are healthier ways of actually doing this where they don't lose as much of the nutrients. If you were to actually put them into your steamer, you can put them into like an Instant Pot and just kind of steam them. That's your best way to go. But if you can't do that, you can put them in a little bit of water. Now what I do is I'll actually Start off with the water cold and I will get them to a rolling boil in the water. Put a little bit of salt in there if you choose to. Some people choose to cook with salt, others don't want to cook with salt. It's completely your choice. But if you're going to season it, you might as well add a little salt to the water and give it like a little salt bath. So it picks up that flavor and you don't actually have to like pour the salt onto your asparagus afterwards. It'll actually almost be infused with it by the time you're done your asparagus will be a little bit flavorful. You can also add lemon juice to that if you'd like. A few different variations you could do. So anyway, there's the asparagus prep for the steaks. Now let's go back to our steaks. Oh, snaps, look at that. These bad boys are on fire. My house is on fire. I'm just kidding. Thank God it's not. But okay, I'm about to pick these up, but I'm going to put on a pot holder because I'm gonna grab the bone right here at the end now. I should have an amazing sear. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Now we're going to cross sear this because like I said, you want to get it both ways on one side. Okay. This bad boy is that way. So I'm going to have to move him over to get a side angle on him. Like I was doing on the last one. Now how in the world do I do that? I didn't give myself a lot of room. I think you just looked at my arm or elbow or something. I don't know, but there's my steaks. They are down. They're getting a beautiful searing. We're only gonna stay out here for just a couple of minutes on this side because that fire is going beautifully. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna get them turned over and we're gonna do the other side. Exact same thing and then they will be ready for the oven. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. All right, our steaks have been flipped and we have got them going on. Oh my gosh, they look so good. You see those grill marks through the flame? I don't know if you guys can, but oh, they are there and they look beautiful. Oh. The next time that I come back to the steaks, we will be taking them off the grill, getting them ready for the oven. All right, so in that time that we were outside, I've got my asparagus on and it is getting ready to steam to a nice little rolling boil. As soon as it does, I will be turning it off and letting it sit for just a few minutes in the water. 
which will then soften it just a tiny bit and then I will take it out and actually roll it in some lemon pepper juice and it is going to be amazing. And then we will be topping our dinner tonight with a hollandaise sauce or bernays. I'm not quite sure yet which way we're gonna go with that, but we will figure that one out. All right guys, here are the steaks off of the barbecue. So this is the first step before they go into the oven. All right, so there's our sear marks that we've got on there. Oh my gosh, these steaks are definitely not ready to go. They are not cooked. They would be raw, raw, raw on the inside like Lady Gaga, raw, raw, raw. Anyway, but we have our oven. It is over here set to 375. All right, and back at the steaks. They're going in the oven. Next time we see them, they will be cooked to perfection. 30 minutes inside of a 375 to finish them off. And that would be for a medium rare temperature with a steak this size. All right, so that's what I'm talking about when I say bring them to a little rolling boil. The asparagus is ready to be taken off of the flames, okay? And now we're going to prep ourselves really quickly. An artichoke, normally I do about four or five of these, but I had one in here, it's kind of going bad. Not bad, but you know what I mean, it needs to be used. So I took off some of the ends of it to make it look a little prettier. We're gonna go ahead and clean this little guy up and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Okay, so you guys see my plate. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do an artichoke really, really fast. So this is a pretty fast process. So if you want this to cook real quick and you want it to be delicious, you just take off the end of it, clean it up, get rid of that, then we're going to half this bad boy. We're gonna take it right in half. And now one thing about artichokes, if you don't eat them or you've never eaten them, is that they have these little tiny fine hairs that are right in the center. And it's actually the middle of the flower because these are technically a flower. So once you cut them in half, you're gonna to get to that little spot that's in there. And this is what they look like on the inside for those of you that may not know. And those right there are not edible, okay? If you get those, are like little tiny splinters. You would not want to eat that. However, those are right up against the best part of an artichoke, which is your heart. So you want the heart. You want to be able to eat all of that. So what we're going to do is use a spoon, and we're going to clean out all of those little tiny hairs. So then what we're left with is the actual heart and the leaves of the flower. And the leaves all have a little tiny meat at the bottom of them that you can actually, it's kind of fun. Fun for kids to eat, fun for adults to eat. You just kind of like peel off the little bits of meat and it feels almost like a reward every time you eat a leaf. And then when you get to the heart, it's almost like you hit the jackpot. So artichokes are fun to eat. They're very good, they're very flavorful, and they're very good for you. So the way we eat them probably isn't the best because we do add some garlic butter to them and things like that, but you can eat them without the butter part of it and make them really a healthy dish for your family. Lemon juice is always really good on it. Some people like to do like a mayonnaise aioli. There's a lot of different things you can do with artichokes, but they are definitely good to eat and you should try adding them to your dish. If you've never done it before, they're fun. You can boil it at this point, you can steam it. What I'm gonna do is just add them to the water that I have for my asparagus and I'm already gonna just roll boil them in that for just a couple of minutes, just enough to tender them up a little bit on the heart so that I can add them to our dish. All right, hold on guys, we're coming back. All right, you guys, without even adding anything to them, look at those asparagus. They look amazing. They look super appetizing. We're gonna add some stuff to them. My artichokes are prepped and ready to go right into the sauce, the water pot here. We're gonna take care of that next. And then if we take a look in my oven, you can hear the steaks just in there sizzling. Listen to that. Oh my gosh. We are ready to meet. Okay guys, so next thing I'm gonna do is prep our sauces. We have already in the pot um, some of the prepping that I need for my Bernays sauce, which is already getting ready to come to a boil. Once that's done, we're going to make up some amazing Bernays sauce in there. Yes, you saw it, an entire stick of butter because we are going to be making a garlic butter that's going to top our steaks. Now, we won't end up using all of this on top of the steaks, but it's always good to make up some extra so you have it because a lot of times people want to dip um, their stuff in there. Now, remember, a little bit goes a long ways with this stuff. So I have here some minced garlic. I'm not actually gonna, I usually like to use crushed garlic, like actually press it and use it, but I'm all out. So at this point, we're gonna be using one um, heaping tablespoon, 
of minced garlic there. And then this seasoning is the one that I told you about. This has the uh, basil and thyme in there. It's got sea salt in it. It's actually really, really good, really tasty. But you don't want to add too much of this because remember, we seasoned our steaks at the beginning. So this is just something that we add a little bit of uh, to the top of our our steak afterwards it's almost like a garlic butter that we're going to be adding but if you look at it I'll show you what it looks like it actually looks really really good you can see that it has a lot of stuff already in there and you're just going to use honestly I wouldn't even say a whole teaspoon of this you're going to use like maybe that much about a half a teaspoon and you're going to add that into your garlic butter that's just for a little bit more flavor that basil and that thyme add a flavor to it little herb little goodness that's going into your dish so we're at 25 minutes here in this video this is about a 30 minute meal so the next time we come together we're going to be plating this bad boy we're going to be putting it all together we have our asparagus that is finished the artichoke is actually right now covered under a lid a dome and it's basically um, boiling right now getting a steam on it so we can have that and our steaks are about 20 minutes out from being finished but I will come back to you when they are and the next step is we're going to be plating this masterpiece of a dinner and you guys can do the exact same thing for your families and I'm telling you right now you will not regret taking the time to watch this video so that you can make this for yourself another thing I forgot to tell you guys is that once you put all of this in here you can do one of two things so your stove is very hot because it has all of the contents in it you don't want to burn yourself but you can totally leave this on the back of your stove and let it become like a naturally drawn butter and allow it to just sit back there and melt down which is what I'm going to do but if you choose to do it and you're in a hurry you can also just stick it in the microwave and nuke it for like literally maybe 20 seconds longer than that you're gonna have like an explosion of fireworks in there but 20 seconds Seconds, mix it up let it sit you'll have your drawn butter but I'm about to put mine on top of my stove it will be warm when you go to handle it so make sure you use a pot holder but set it down back of the stove almost where the heat from the ovens coming through and you will have a nice uh, drawn butter by the time your food is ready to go so that's another thing I wanted to tell you all right so a little drizzle lemon juice right onto your asparagus and this is going to be so flavorful. I dropped a couple of seeds, but we'll get those out. Just add a touch for your asparagus, guys. Okay, guys, so here we go. We have our asparagus ready. We're about to whisk really quickly our holiday or Bernay sauce. Correction, Bernay sauce. As soon as we get that going, we're going to have to do a really, really quick whisk, which at that point, I don't know how I'm gonna hold it and do it and all that kind of stuff. So we may not be able to go through the steps of that, but um, burning sauce is amazing over steaks and pretty much you have to do a really, really quick whisk on it in order to thicken it, but it will separate really quickly as well. So I'm gonna get to it. I will be right back with you guys. Maybe not. <laughs> okay guys, the ingredients are in and we are doing a really, really fast whisking here. Hopefully we'll get this bad boy set and ready to go. Just keep spinning it. Slow it down. Let it go. Here we go. See that parsley in there? Okay. It's starting to really thicken up. I'm gonna, gonna have to one-handed turn this off in just a second so I don't lose it all over my stove. But if you can see, it's actually rising really, really quickly. Just keep whisking it, whisking it. Here we go. In a minute, you're gonna have some amazing hollandaise sauce. You can also do this in a blender if you want to. Blenders work very well, but there you go. Let it sit in a rolling boil for a second. And the hollandaise sauce is ready to rock. That's going to be delicious. There we go. Okay guys, so remember I told you about these little tiny hairs in here? I'm gonna show you exactly how to clean those out. They're super easy. If you watch, look at how they just pull away. So once you steam it, you can just come in here with a spoon and you can clean out your well just like that. So I'm going to like take that off and I will show you exactly how we do this at the end. Okay guys, so our artichokes are cleaned out now. We've got a center beautiful well right in the middle of those. That, my drawn butter, if I take my little pot holder, remember, don't forget the pot holder, it will be hot from the back of the stove. So you want to take your drawn butter and... You're gonna use the same drawn butter, look at that. Look at the drawn butter. So give it a little stir with your spoon. 
and all of that garlic butter with a little bit of the herbs that are in there you're going to take a little bit and you're going to put some right in the well of that artichoke and it is so good so a lot of times people like to get a little like side dish so you can basically just dip it you know and keep dipping it what i like to do is just take little spoonfuls and i'm actually going to kind of angle you guys that direction if i can you see my little well I'm going to show you right now what we do with this. So you basically just take it and you're going to do like a drizzle right into the well of the artichoke. And all of that is going to go right inside of there. So every time you take a leaf, you're basically taking it from its own little bowl that you created by taking out the center of the artichoke. And all you got to do is just kind of, you know, dip in your own little bowl that you've got right here. And you don't even need to like have a secondary bowl for that artichoke you're plating with your food. Look at that. Look at those little butter bowls that we made with our garlic herb butter that's right inside of the artichoke. It's amazing. And all you do in this situation is just take one leaf at a time, pulling it out and getting all those flavors that are inside of there. Okay guys, so I just pulled the steaks out of the oven and if you can see and hear them, they are ready to rest while I get the rest of this plating done. Oh my gosh, these look absolutely amazing. You guys see that? Oh, who is ready for some of this? Tomahawk steaks. We got that, we have our Bernays, we have our asparagus, we have our artichokes with their little garlic butter wells. Oh man, this is gonna be good. Okay guys, so here it is. This is Brian's platter. Now when I say platter, this is a service platter you would serve an entire family on. But that bad boy is going into Brian for his dinner plate. Get a good look at it, guys. Eat your heart out. This is what the Wintrick boys eat for dinner. Alright? Next time up, I think we're going to go with some fettuccine Alfredo. Who's ready for it? Alright? We will follow up with this, but here is what's for dinner in the Wintrick house. Enjoy. And for all those meat lovers out there, there it is, sliced to perfection. Can you just taste it? Look at the juices. Oh man, is it juicy. This thing is ready to be eaten. This steak will feed my entire family, minus Ryan. And there you have it, guys. My first 30 minute dinner from start to finish for you guys and it is our tomahawk steaks i hope you guys enjoyed yourself i hope you guys learned something maybe you did maybe you didn't maybe you're already a chef maybe you're already just a mom cooking in that kitchen but whatever you are i'm sure your family loves and values you so much for what you do when you're in there making up this food with love so tonight you got an opportunity to see what i do in the kitchen for my family when i cook Tomorrow, I think we will possibly do fettuccine Alfredo. And if we do that chicken fettuccine Alfredo, I will take you guys along for the ride again. So I'm going to start doing this. Please subscribe. And that way we can follow this journey of what's for dinner in my house from day to day. And I will be setting up a YouTube so that we can do this on a daily basis. And maybe you guys are interested. Maybe we'll learn something new together because there's a lot of stuff that can be cooked out there. And I'm ready for the challenge. Bon appetit.